Bloop a doop a doo. Bloop a doop a da ba Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Michael here, and I'm going to give you a quick review of Final Fantasy III. Early Final Fantasy games, and really most early JRPGs in general, have similar issues. They tend to focus too much on bland characters that the player can imprint themselves onto at the expense of good character development and storytelling. Final Fantasy III feels like a huge leap forward in terms of gameplay from the two previous Final Fantasy games, but it feels like a big step backward in terms of characters and story. Disclaimer, I did not play Final Fantasy III on original hardware, as I don't have a Famicom. I played the 3D remake on my phone, the iOS port. I'll mostly be focusing on aspects of the game that I imagine to be accurate to both versions of the game, but I've only experienced the iOS port. The big and obvious thing to talk about with Final Fantasy III is the brand new job system. It really is fun to play around with, but some of the related mechanics, like the way each character has a buffer period of a number of battles before they're not weakened in a new job, and the way that some jobs, Thief comes to mind, are really not good at doing the thing that they're supposed to do until higher job levels. All of this makes the job system less fun. The world in this game is pretty nice. It's a JRPG staple to include a floating continent at some point in the game, but starting on the floating continent is a really nice little twist, especially since you don't know you're starting on a floating continent. The world below, starting off as pretty donked up until you show up and fix some things, is a good touch too. Part of my issue with the storytelling though is that there doesn't seem to be a big overarching problem that you need to solve. The wind crystal tells you that you're a great hero and that you need to fix the world. But after that, the issues seem pretty small and you tend to solve them as you go from town to town. Zand, is that how you pronounce his name? Zand is mentioned early on, but he's not made to feel like much of a threat. By about three quarters of the way through the game, I felt very little motivation to keep playing. The characters in Final Fantasy III, both heroes and villains, are especially weak. The interesting, compelling characters in this game are all of the NPC heroes. The four heroes, Luneth, Ark, Refia, and Ingus, were added to the 3D remake. They also added a tiny bit of characterization for them, but it's all at the very beginning of the game and overall feels inconsequential. The villains all mostly deal with their individual countries. There's very little looming threat of a big bad, even though one of the first boss villains Villains, Medusa, mentions that she works for Zand. We never meet him though, or really see any of his influence, so the strength of the character is drastically weakened. The interesting characters are all of the temporary assistants to the main heroes. This game does something interesting that we don't really see in other Final Fantasy games. The party of four heroes occasionally has a fifth party member in a convoy of sorts, who has a chance to begin each battle with a turn for themselves. In most cases, this is some sort of offensive move that has a fairly good chance of wiping out the enemies. Desh, Arya, and Une, Unai, Une? Anyway, Desh, Arya, and Une all have pretty strong character motivations compared to the four heroes at least. Amato's designs for these NPCs are all pretty interesting, if not his best work. In the 3D version, most of these Amato designs are pretty faithfully recreated. The graphics of the 3D version are fine, if not particularly exciting. No complaints though. Most of the rest of the game is fine at best. I gave the design a 3 out of 5. It's not particularly original, but it is consistent at least. The monsters in this game are some of the best designs in the series though. The sound and music are all middling across the board. I'll admit that I mostly did not listen to the soundtrack since I was playing on my phone, but what I heard from my phone or from listening to various compilations on YouTube, eh, it's fine. The gameplay on the iOS port is pretty frustrating though. I hate moving a character around on any map. The battle commands are very clunky on a phone. I know this is not how the game itself works, just this port, but it's so distractingly bad on iOS that I can't help but give it bad scores on this front. So, breakdown of the scoring. Story, two out of five. Characters, two out of five. Graphics, five out of five. Design, three out of five. Sound, three out of five. Gameplay, two out of five. By those scores, the game gets a 57%. I gave the game a heart score of 65. With those averaged together, the game gets a 66. It's a solid D. Comparing this to Final Fantasy 1, 68%, 
Final Fantasy 1 gets some points just because it's first. Compared to Final Fantasy 2, which I gave a 74%, Final Fantasy 2 has story and character in spades over this game. If you know me, you know that's way more important than almost anything else in a JRPG. So thanks for watching. Let me know if you agree or disagree with this. Um, I, I would love to hear your thoughts. Also, I'll be talking very soon about The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past. So if you have any thoughts on that, let me know in the comments. Give me a like, thumbs up, share it with your friends. That's it for today. Maintain your groovy selves. I'll talk to you all soon.